Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I have a problem with unwanted echoes and reflections. Every time I want to record vocals or voiceover or record acoustic instruments with microphones, I have to deal with the fact that my space is not acoustically treated. And most of you guys watching this channel are probably in the same situation as me. You want to improve the quality of your recordings, but you don't see the need or have the means to spend an exorbitant amount of money with soundproofing and treatment. And for those of you who don't know, having it done professionally can bring in a five or even six figure bill. There are software options to reduce ambience like Waves Clarity, which I've been using on this channel to clean up my voice in lieu of a proper recording space. But most of these work specifically for voice and if I try sticking these plugins on anything non-human, they get cut out as part of the de-reverberation algorithm. So what can you do? Thankfully, there are budget-friendly options out there, which is where today's sponsor comes in, AeroZoom. AeroZoom is a company who provides soundproofing and acoustic treatment products. There's an excellent resource page on their website that helps you down the proverbial rabbit hole. So don't say I didn't warn you. There's a lot of reading and watching to do if you're serious about this stuff. I should also inform you upfront that AeroZoom didn't pay me to review their product. They kind sent a pack of wedge acoustic foam panels for me to install and review. However, since I shared a bedroom with my wife and the major musical activities like recording big instruments like a drum kit is physically impossible in this tiny space, and so I decided to assist the Methodist School of Music who are building a band lab for their contemporary band training capabilities. AeroZoom's packaging is a sight to behold. Who would have thought that 48 pieces of foam panels can fit in such a small package? The secret is that they're vacuum sealed, so there's some fun in opening the pack and airing out the panels, check in every now and then to see how far they've expanded. There is a set of instructions to follow when it comes to unpacking and preparing the panels for installation, so don't skip those parts. This juncture feels like an appropriate time to say, I'm sorry. To David and the team at AeroZoom who waited months for this video to drop, I'm sorry. Welcome to Singapore and the world of building management bureaucracy. I'll follow up this video with one where the panels are installed as they were originally designed, but for now, I've managed to put together a series of tests. Before we go any further, I need to be crystal clear. Acoustic foam panels don't block sound. Don't buy foam panels thinking that you'll be able to soundproof your room. Blocking sound to that extent requires structural changes. When you look at recording studios that have all this fancy foam all over the place, don't make the assumption that it's the foam that's blocking out sound from going through the wall. It's not. They have added layers of mass and caulk and isolation to that wall first to block the sound from traveling through, then added the foam to reduce echoes in the room. The main goal of foam is in reducing the average reverberation time in space. Sound goes out from its source and travels until it has simply gone through enough air that it loses energy and falls below the background noise level or below the threshold for our hearing. If there happens to be a hard, immobile surface in the way, like a wall, floor or ceiling before it has gone through that certain amount of air, the sound will bounce right off and head in a different direction, still looking for enough air to go through before it dissipates. The louder the sound, the more air it has to go through to dissipate. The buildup of bouncing sound waves in the space leads to what we perceive as reverberation or ambience, and the more that the sound bounces, the longer the reverberation time is. Acoustic foam does two things to reduce reverberation time. The soft material absorbs the sound, so reflected sound waves have much less energy, and the pattern of the foam disrupts a smooth surface that will otherwise reflect sound. And for creators who record vocals, voiceovers, and recording live instruments, reducing that ambience helps you achieve clearer sound. Whew. It's important I went through the science first because that's going to define for us what we need to be hearing out for when we listen to the tests. We should be asking the question, do foam panels reduce the overall ambience? I did three tests, a simple clap test which is the most transient form of sound I can naturally make, a tambourine which emphasizes high frequency content, and a real life test using a vocal line. I assembled a corner of the band lab where I can position a microphone to capture maximum reflections, first without foam, then on one side with foam and finally both corners with foam. Fun fact, sound is several decibels louder in a corner compared to the middle of a room due to a phenomena called sound reinforcement. It's caused by sound waves from different directions converging and reinforcing each other. Hearing for reverberation, especially for small changes, is a tricky business. You might not be able to hear much of a difference, but trust me, when it comes to recording, every bit of reduction matters. My advice for this part of the video Use a good pair of headphones and definitely don't watch the segment over phone speakers. For full disclosure, I'm using a pair of Sony MDR7506s.
Hallelujah! He saves through the death of His Son. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! He saves through Jesus the Crucified One. Jesus the Crucified One. Hallelujah, hallelujah, he saves through the death of his son, hallelujah, hallelujah, he saves through Jesus the crucified one. Hallelujah, hallelujah, he saves through the death of his son, hallelujah, hallelujah, he saves through Jesus the crucified one. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. When I was recording these tests live, I had a sense that the ambience was being reduced and I'm happy to report that the recordings corroborated this, especially in the upper mids and high end. I was particularly happy with what I was hearing with the vocals, which was clearly cleaner and more focused. I can imagine how much of a bigger difference it would make if I had assembled the entire wall of 48 panels, which, by the way, I'll follow up in a second video when the room is in a more complete state. In short, these acoustic foam panels do make a difference, but you need to plan out the coverage you need for maximum effect. Here, AeroZoom has a handy tile calculator on this site that differentiates between light, standard, and heavy intensity treatment. These tiles will make a difference to your room aesthetic, so do consult your spouse, your partner, and your landlord if making these additions is permissible. Do look out for my follow-up video where I'll have all 48 of these panels installed in an optimum position to disrupt reflections between two ends of the band lab. Hit that like, subscribe, and bell notification button to join me on this journey of musical discipleship. See you in the next one. And until then, I'm Justin, and I'm all about worship guitar.